Have you ever dreamt as a kid to one day buy and drive one of those fancy supercars you saw on television? Jaguar, Ferrari, Lamborghini, and many more, only to discover that their prices were a bit too high for your income. Well, we've all been through that. Growing up, some cars became surprisingly affordable, while there were others left to be a desire of car collectors. However, what you don't know is that there is one particular supercar that is so expensive it plays on an entirely different field of luxury and rarity. It's the 1994 McLaren F1, the legendary model designed by Gordon Murray. If you played Gran Turismo 7, you may be familiar with the price of this car, but for those who don't, the McLaren F1 has a current value of $20,500,000 during its latest auction, a number that makes it the most expensive road legal production car ever sold in history. But is there a reason for that? On the outside, the F1 looks like a car that has nothing more than the rivals of the same era. But on the inside, there are many different factors contributing to making this car so unique and legendary. Without further ado, let's dive into the video. The history of the F1 officially begins more than 20 years before the first production model. Gordon Murray, the legendary car designer responsible for cars such as the Brabham BT46, BT55 and the McLaren MP44, already began sketching his idea of a one plus two road car seater in 1969, following the dream of Bruce McLaren, who at that time dreamed of a road car named after him, before he passed away in 1970. Two decades of sketches and ideas later, the dream finally came true with the F1. And it was already clear that it was a car of an entirely different breed. Thanks to the genius of Gordon Murray and the excellent work of the McLaren engineers, the F1 boasted an incredible number of futuristic features and innovations. The aerodynamics, for example, were outstanding for that time, thanks to an excellent design capable of reducing drag while at the same time boosting downforce. Furthermore, the car had a relatively low weight, as for the first time ever a carbon fiber chassis has been implemented for a road production model, a result that didn't come without a notable effort. The team spent more than 3,000 total working hours to produce every single chassis unit. A clear recall to the handcrafted sports car pioneered by Ferrari in the 50s and the 60s. That's what the F1 was all about after all. Gordon Murray wasn't limiting himself to make a simple supercar. He wanted to craft a pure red of car culture, speed and motor racing. A machine that demanded a connection with the driver to become one and only with it. That's why the F1 didn't feature any driving assist like ABS, traction control, power steering or sequential shifting. It was pure road driving, all in the hands of the driver. A sense of control and balance with the machine boosted by the central single-seater cockpit. There was no room for passengers and other features. It was just the driver in the optimal position to find the ideal control of the car. But still, we are forgetting probably the most important element of this machine, the engine. The F1 featured a screaming 6.1 liter V12, capable of generating more than 620 brake horsepower, a work of engineering that involved the use of nothing less than gold under the engine cover. 16 grams of precious metal used as heat deflector in the foil-lined engine bay. A powertrain that ultimately, combined with all the different features and innovations of the F1, brought the car to have an astonishing top speed of 370 km per hour, making it the fastest supercar of that time, and as many claim, even the first ever hypercar in history. The F1 is already unique on its own, being the first ever road car by McLaren, a beautiful timeless handcrafted machine 
produced in just 106 models from 1992 to 1998, engineered by one of the greatest minds in car design. Featuring innovations, exclusive elements and outstanding performances, no other supercar of that period has been able to replicate. It was, already at that time, the best road car in history. But its legacy doesn't stop here. What contributes even more to the legend of this name is its motorsport tale. Originally, McLaren didn't have any plans to make the supercar a racing model, but as the rule books for the Endurance Series changed to their favor, and as many racing teams pressured McLaren to develop a racing version of the F1, history changed forever. The first racing version was the McLaren F1 GTR, following the name of the main racing category of the Endurance Series. It first raced in the BPR GT Global Series, a championship that temporarily replaced the World Sports Car Championship, which would later become the FIA GT Championship, a series that the F1 GTR absolutely dominated from 1994 to 1996. Not only that, the car also won on its first debut at the 24 Hour of Le Mans in 1995 under the Koksai Kaihatsu Racing Team and finished third in its class in 1996 at the same race, while at the same time boasting victories in the Japanese JGTC series again as a rookie. A year later, the car changed the shape with its long tail edition, taking part in the FIA GT Championship and winning once again the 24 hour of Le Mans during the same year, against a fierce Porsche 911 GT1, but slowly losing terrain and performance the very next season against the Mercedes CLK LM, the Nissan R390 GT1 and the Porsche 911 GT198. The car kept racing for a few years in many different racing series, particularly the Japanese JGTC under the legendary Lark colors, before retiring definitely with its head held high. At this point, the name of the F1 was gone from the world of racing and road cars, but its legend had just started. The F1 remained for a long period of time the first and only supercar ever produced by McLaren, until the MP4 12C in 2009. And during all of these years, its legend kept growing and growing, as it was considered by many the greatest road car ever produced and the fact it represents the first ever effort of McLaren outside of the racing world makes it even more special. Who has the privilege of owning one of these cars doesn't only own a simple supercar. What they own is a unique rare model, the perfect conjunction of beauty, engineering and performance, a car that traced the magic history of successes in motorsport and of recognition in the car culture world the perfect and definitive combination of triumphs and achievements that still today went unreplicated. The masterpiece of Gordon Murray, a work of more than 20 years in progress. That's why the value of this car is so high, because unlike its main competitors and rivals, the F1 is not a simple supercar. The McLaren F1 is a legend and will always be.